Hello. I recently got a GTEC A10M and posted some pictures of uh, some dual extruded uh, prints that I had uh, constructed with it and uh, was asked how exactly I did it. Uh, there's some really good uh, videos out there. Uh, the guy teaching tech's got some good videos that I watched and, and there are a couple other people that have the A10. Uh, but I wanted to just go through a quick walkthrough of exactly how I went about uh, putting the uh, putting the prints together with um, uh, with Simplify 3D and hopefully start a discussion on how how to improve these. Um, you can see uh, when when I originally when I got the printer and opened it up, uh, you know, it comes with a memory card and it's got this model on it of a lizard and it prints out and it 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 looks wonderful. Uh, you can see it, it it actually turned out very good right out of the box it you know after I got the the bed leveled it just it just printed great um, so I wanted to uh, to try to try to duplicate that with some of my own models um, I'm using the models I'm using are actually set up for dual extrusion and uh, are uh, off of thingiverse there's there are several models if you go out there, um, there are some of these low poly uh, Pokemon. Um, there, there are quite a few other. There's some uh, uh, some of the the woven chain mail ones are multicolor. Um, but if you look for dual extrusion or two color or whatever, you'll you'll come up with some some models to use. Uh, but I'm going to use um, actually a Pikachu model uh, for this demonstration. And so let me get over to uh, Simplify 3D and I'll show you how to do it. Um, the first thing we're going to do is is actually just make a single Pikachu, and I ended up making multiple Pikachus, and I'll, I will show you why that is uh, in a minute. I think it'll become obvious. So when you import them, um, there's a there's a dual version on Thingiverse, and then a multicolor one if you've got more than two colors. But I just have two, so I'm going to use the dual version here. And you import the model in, and you can see that the, the um, uh, you can see that you know there's one model that has the body and then the other model has the second color pieces and right now when when I've imported the model separately it, it's displaying them separately as separate pieces uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go configure my printer I'm going to take this start to finish so uh, the, the A10M isn't one of the ones listed so I'm going to go into other and I'm going to configure it. I'm going to call it the GTA10M. Uh, it's a Cartesian machine running Marlin firmware. Baud rate's fine. Build volume is 220 by 220 by 260. Uh, nozzle diameter is fine. Filament diameter is fine. It's got two extruders um, and a heated bed. And that finishes the setup of the actual uh, printer itself. Now I've got um, I've got these two, and somehow you've got to make them print in different colors. So this is really the trick here with the latest version of Simplify 3D. Um, you can see I'm running uh, version 4.1.0, which just came out recently, and has improved support for uh, multi-filament. And I'm going to go into the dual extrusion wizard. And uh, you can see I've got my profile template set up as A10M. I've got just a standard PLA configuration. And it's gone ahead and, and made color one, color two, extruder one, extruder two. It put the body in extruder one and the details in extruder two. And so, uh, you know, when I set up the printer, I want to make sure I have the, uh, the body color. Uh, in this case, I think I'm going to make it a yellow in the, on the left side. And then... Uh, a, a red color on the uh, on the right side. I tick the box that says group and align models and that's going to put the models together. And so now here I have uh, I have my Pikachu model all put together. Um, now in order to in order to print this correctly you have to go then edit your process settings. And um, you know since I started from scratch with the new machine we're going to have to make all of these by hand. There are obviously ways you can um, you can save these with uh, with Simplify 3D so that you don't have to type them in every time. But I'm going to go ahead and type them all in. Um, so uh, you can see the profile is, is the A10M, PLA, medium quality. 
I'm going to drop the, the infill percentage way down. There's no reason to have a bunch of infill on these. Um, the extruder configuration, um, I'm still tweaking the um, uh, to get some stringiness out. Right now, my retraction distance I'm using is four millimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in here. Um, and you have to be sure you do it for both extruders separately because they are separate settings. Um, I don't have any changes to the layer configuration. Uh, on additions, I like to put uh, four outlines around the model uh, just to make sure I've got my bed level, that nothing's gotten knocked out of whack. And one of the key pieces here that you want to make sure of is uh, with, the, with the dual extrusion wizard, it automatically enables the ooze shield. And that's useful if you're using a printer that has two nozzles. Uh, but if you have a printer that has just one nozzle, you're not going to use an ooze shield. You're going to use a, a prime pillar. And in my cases, in my case, you want to make sure it's set to all extruders. Um, I had to bump it up just a little bit to um, 14 millimeters for the pillar width in order to uh, in order to fully change from one color to the other. When I had it at the default 12 millimeters, I still got a, a little bit of the old colors when I was doing it. Um, northeast corner is going to work well for this for this model. Uh, you'll see why in, a, in just a minute. Um, your infill, I'm not going to change any of that. Uh, there's no support material. Uh, temperature, I need to change because the uh, the Maker Geeks filament I'm using likes a nice hot uh, nice hot extruder. I'm actually trying to lower the temperature in this run compared to the others to try to get rid of my stringiness because uh, I still have some remaining. Um, and then I didn't make any changes to any of these other any of these other settings. And so I'll hit OK. And if I hit Prepare to Print, you select both processes. And it's going to it's going to uh, show you what it is now. So here's here's the uh, just a single a single Pikachu. Um, you can see I've got the coloring set to active tool head. And so you can see over here on the purge block in the areas where both colors are being used that uh, the, the purge block has both colors in the parts of the model where there's only one color used. The, the purge block only has the one color. Similarly, up here, see, it, it has uh, the, the second extruder up here. So if you take that and you print that, that's going to come out. Uh, that's going to come out just like you expect it with with two separate uh, two separate colors. And then it's, it's just up to uh, uh, getting the configuration set up such that, uh, you know, you, you get rid of all your stringing and everything that's this dependent on, you know, how your filament prints with this printer. Um, now, you can see that the, the build time is five hours and 36 minutes. Uh, that's quite some time for just this little teeny uh, model of Pikachu. And the, the fact of the matter is, most of the time that's spent in printing this model is spent printing this, uh, the, the, the color change block. It, it's really not, um, you know, two color printing isn't all that efficient if you're just making one model or if you're just making um, a, a small model. Um, you know, on a, on a larger model, you can make, you can make, you know, a, a model that filled this bed and still have the same size purge block. So what we're going to do, and, and, and you'll see that it won't add hardly any time to it. We're going to add a few more Pikachus to this. Uh, and this is, this is something else that, uh, that can be kind of tricky. And, uh, so I wanted to, to make sure to show this too. Uh, so I'm, I'm in here. I'm going to select, I'm going to make sure I've got, uh, everything selected here and under edit. I'm going to duplicate the models. I'm going to make three more, three more Pikachus. And so you can see now I've got, uh, I've got three Pikachus there. Um, the next thing I'm going to do to keep the, uh, to keep them grouped together, I'm going to select each individual Pikachu and I'm going to group the, uh, the body and details for each one back together, uh, so that we, uh, don't lose the, uh, so they don't get separated accidentally through all this. Um, now the, the issue at this point is that the, um, uh, we don't have these associated with, with the different processes. And so I've got to run the, uh, run the dual extrusion wizard again with all of them Excel uh, selected. 
and here I'm going to go shift all of the details over here to extruder 2. The body stays on extruder 1. I'm going to leave this group and align models, even though everything's all grouped and aligned already. Um, and I'm going to hit OK. Now, when I did that, and then center arrange. Uh, so when I did that, it it actually reset all of my process settings and uh, back to its initial settings, you know, the, the standard PLA settings. So I'm going to have to go back in here. I'm going to select both of the processes and I'm going to quickly go back in here and make my make my settings changes again. Uh, go to additions, turn off the U shield, prime pillar. Uh, something you can do that that sometimes makes I haven't seen it a difference in the in the estimate, but I think it may actually make it a little faster is to change the speed multiplier on the prime pillar. Um, you really don't care about the quality of the prime pillar. The you know the goal there is just to get the get the filament switched over. Um, go with the skirt, you know, skirt outline. Go to temperature. Set these. And we're done. And so now we'll hit uh, prepare to print. Make sure both processes are selected. Hit OK. And so now you can see I've got um, all four of my Pikachu there and a single prime tower. And you can see that, you know, I'm, I'm printing four times the models and it added, you know, somewhere on the order of 10 minutes to a five hour print. Um, so it's, you know, it, it's, it's a lot more efficient to print more than uh, just a single, uh, more than just a single model when you're, when you're doing this. Um, so in, in my case, I, I'm printing from SD card. Um, you know, you save the toolpath to disk, put it on the, uh, on the SD card, put it in the printer and print. Um, and I can show you the results. Um, so here's here's a test I did before uh, before I changed the retraction settings, and you can see, uh, you know, I've got quite a bit of stringiness with this filament. Now th this is all going to be filament dependent, right? I mean, you know, so it, with with these models, I actually uh, you know took them apart and then touched them up with a with an exacto knife and a heat gun, and I, I got them looking uh, looking pretty good. Um, you know, you can see that it, it all cleaned up fairly well. You know, a lot of times stringiness is pretty easy to deal with. Uh, so anyways, so I'm still obviously working on, on tweaking these. Um, but I'd had some requests for, uh, to demonstrate how it was that I, uh, made the prints that I, I am making. Um, I'll do a different video showing the, the, the vase mode and, uh, how to, how to do the, the color transition with the mixing, which is a completely different operation and doesn't involve a, uh, a, a purge block. And uh, I'll, I'll do that one separately and post it too. So good luck. Uh, let me know in the comments what, uh, what you think. I'll also put some links in the comments to some of the, uh, some of the other YouTube videos that are out there on the A10M that, that, uh, you know, I use to get this far and, uh, we'll, we'll try to push this further ahead. Thank you.